Today in Inside Craft Show, we're talking about shooting anamorphic on the GH5. I like mixing up aspect ratios. We're not going to jump frame sizes like a Christopher Nolan film. Yeah, you're going to mix up aspect ratios like Christopher Nolan did in the biographical movies about my life. Oh, they're biographical films. My apologies. I, I didn't... I'm Batman. There should be all kinds of movies about me. Tragic, really. Your parents dying. Uh, you must have to relive that a lot. You know, like in every single movie ever about Batman. Why are you always dissing on Batman v Superman? It's a very intimate movie. Our mothers share the same name. Yeah. So today on Inside Craft Show, we're going to talk about anamorphic. Is it a gimmick or is it something really worth digging into? get my invitation about dinner. I did. Well, what say you? Soup's cold, you asshole. So yeah, that, so that video, we're, we're setting up for what you've just already seen in the future, but in the past. So, uh... All we wanted to do was kind of talk about anamorphic lenses and the practicality of it. This bongo tie is kicking my butt. When, when should you shoot it? And is it even worth shooting anamorphic? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of varieties. Obviously, filmmakers would, would love it uh, if, you, if you need that desired look. I think it'd be really cool for wedding photographers, cinematographers in that space. Um, but again, what about the average user? What about the general user? What about the new user? So we're going to kind of go step by step through our anamorphic process, or we're using SLR Magic Anamorphics. We have a 75, a 50, and a 35. Okay. And uh, we'll kind of go over, they were all used in the short film as well. And then again, we'll kind of show you some results. Anyone curious about it? This is a HMI, it's a 1.2. Uh, the slang that I've heard it referred to is as a Hemi, um, just cause HMI. This is an old lamp. It's been in my family for, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. It's like an heirloom. Been here for a billion generations. Cam walk is old as crap. You basically have kind of seen what we've put together here. We had the little short film playing. We showed you a little behind the scenes. We just wanted to make it a little bit interesting, talk about some of the lighting setups. With that HMI, we were kind of able to use it as a primary light, the light pouring in through that wall, and we just treat it as a door um, or a window or whatever. We just wanted that light to come through. So then Kyle uh, from UNC Studios with, was with us, and he was able to kind of shoot behind the scenes. So what I tried to do is match them up best I could. In this case, you have the anamorphic up top and the GH5 just shooting on the bottom. And you can kind of see how they stack up and how me and Jeff were approaching it. There's only three of us here. And one of the challenges of dealing with a lot of this content is, is literally sitting down and dealing with the lenses themselves because they're very different from a standard lens. So a standard lens is called a spherical lens, right? And the way it interprets light and pulls everything in gives you that nice 16 by nine image. Um, and then of course an anamorphic goes into the crazy ratios that they do like 239. So 239, 240 are aspect ratios. It gives you that big wide space. The interesting part for us and part of the challenge we want to do is can we take those same anamorphics and use them in a little more confined space to tell a cool narrative or in this case like a joke. Uh, Dinner with Andre 2. Um, if you've not seen the movie My Dinner with Andre, it's about two guys sitting down at a table talking about life. Um, so I <laughs> wanted to up it. I'm a big fan of UHF. What can I say? Gandhi 2 is one of my favorite parodies of all time. Anyway, so you have spherical lenses, which are standard lenses, is what I'll call them standard lenses. Then you have the anamorphic. And in order to do that, the GH5 has a really cool setting in it to, to change it over to anamorphic. But there's one big major drawback that gets to be a very big challenge. And that challenge is going to be the fact that you need to de-squeeze it because it's going to show up as a 4.3 square. And 4.3 is the old term for old TV if you've ever seen 4.3, Wes Anderson sometimes does 4.3 stuff. I think Grand Budapest had 4.3 uh, imagery in it. Anyway, so 4.3 is a square where well, you have to de-squeeze that square. 
And so the GH5 um, does not have that function built into it, but what it does have is the ability to do it, uh, send it out over HDMI, at which point you're gonna need something like the Shogun Flame or Inferno, or I'm not even sure if Small HD does it, but you probably are gonna need an external monitor, which will then allow you to frame up the image the way you need to, and you can see where you want it to be. And in, in addition to that, you can also set up some guidelines. And one of the tricks for that is, is setting up 16 by nine guidelines. You didn't want to finish in anamorphic. You wanted to finish in 16.9, but you wanted to shoot on anamorphic glass because of the way things look. Certainly lens flares are noticeable. Um, and we popped as many lens flares as we could just, again, for our own testing purposes. We didn't want to just do a, a basic test. We're going to get to those. What we wanted to do is let's throw it up and, and see where we land practically, kind of like just diving in and trying to figure it out. So you can see there's lens flares everywhere. So that's an advantage of anamorphic glass. Um, even though some, some of them aren't going to have the same flares, it is part of it. The glass we were using was SLR Magic. We had a uh, 35, a 50, and I think I said 75 in the beginning, but to correct myself, it's actually 70. Is that correct? It is a 70. And these are obviously native to the uh, Micro Four Thirds sensor. They're built for it. You're going to need a... Um, a whole new rig in order to use these lenses. They're very heavy. And as you can see in this footage here, this is not film footage, right? This is not narrative driven. I, uh, my daughter turned four, so I filmed some of her birthday party. And so these are images from that. And you can kind of see through this footage that I like the way people look in it. I really do. I like the roll off factor. I like the way that the, the light is being interpreted and their faces are being interpreted. It feels very cinematic to me. It feels more cinematic. Um, and all I did was just throw it up and shoot. But it, it also was, you know, it'd be a bit of a waste because it's a very heavy rig. You've got to readjust it. I had to have full uh, follow focus rods. I had to have a follow focus on board. Um, I, of course, then had to have a Shogun and I had to power the camera in addition to all that. So we were using our little um, battery gimmick with the dummy battery that has the, the P-tap. If you haven't seen that, there's another video about it. I'll post it up top. So we had to take all that, put it together in order to make it work, right? It's because you need all these different tools just to pull it off. And having shot footage now, Jeff and I both believe that the most important part is having a crew around. Not for the lighting element, you at least need an AC team with you. Because uh, breaking down and changing the lens, so let's just say you're doing a lens change, it's not gonna be a quick deal. You need to be thinking about your lenses from the very beginning because it does take, so we'll say a minute and a half to two minutes to change a lens. And Jeff is a very seasoned uh, first AC. I said earlier, I think it would be cool for wedding cinematographers. Um, any sort of videography that is meant to feel cinematic in a few spots, I think it's kind of cool to pull the Christopher Nolan we shot on IMAX, here's the different frame size aspect ratio gag, but it might be really nice to have the ceremony in that or something like that. Like, So if you're into that space or you're into sort of those really beautiful lifestyle type pieces, it might be really handy. Would I use it on a corporate shoot? No, not unless it absolutely needed to mandate the fact that I needed anamorphic because the post side of it's a little bit more trouble than it's worth if you're just doing a corporate thing. However, let's say you're doing a commercial and you wanted to shoot uh, anamorphic but finish in 16 by nine for television because I think the reaction from audiences to seeing anamorphic uh, in its true form on TV probably wouldn't go so well. And I'm sure the, the advertiser would want their product in a little bit bigger space, if you will. So it'd be cool to shoot anamorphic and then finish in 16 by nine, which does give you a different look, but you're really going to need to apply your film sort of mechanics in order to do so. You need to be thinking about your lens choices, your shot structure. Everything changes on anamorphic. It is a complete different shooting process. To put all summation, here's where it stands. I love shooting anamorphic with GH5. I think it's a great process. It's fantastically fun and pretty much cost effective because keep in mind there's no reason to own these lenses unless you're doing a ton of cinema work so you can rent them from someplace like lens rentals or borrow lenses something like that so they're a really cool effective way of getting this really ultra cinematic look we're going to be testing these lenses a little bit more thoroughly and so it will allow us to kind of explore these and we'll talk about post we'll talk about the color process we'll talk about everything as we go through it just to be comprehensive about it because it is a different way of seeing, a different way of filming that can work both 16.9 or anamorphic if you wanted to keep it in that ultra 239 space. I'd like to give a shout out to Unink Studios and thank uh, Kyle over there for you know coming along and helping us. Kyle's also the gateway drug. He's the one that loaned us the GH5 so many months ago that unlocked the doors. So give a shout out to, to Unink Studios. You can follow them. Uh, don't forget to sub to them too. Speaking of subs, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And with that said, we're out. See ya. I'm Drew Hall with Craft Show, and what we like to do with commercials is just make them not suck. Does your business suck? <laughs> <laughs>